Hello, biology class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two of the immunity unit, uh, three lines of defense, part two. This is going to focus solely on the third line of defense. Uh, it is the most complex. It is the most important. Uh, as you can see, we have, ooh, there we go, a key point one up here is the third line and then we've got T cells, B cells and antibodies These are different parts of the third line of defense. So like the second line of defense has a name, the inflammatory response, the third line of defense is called our immune system response. Uh, essentially, uh, the end goal of the immune system response is to produce antibodies. So to make antibodies, antibody production, so that we can respond to an antigen. So antibody production produces antibodies in a response to an antigen. Now, antibodies, I know it's key point four, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, you know a little bit about already. They detect antigens. Uh, in this case, we're gonna just be talking about them in terms of detecting a foreign invader antigen instead of an antigen on a blood cell. Uh, again, the purpose of these antibodies is, uh, or these proteins, is to immobilize the intruder. So when we talked about blood, it was to immobilize the red blood cell that had it on, had that antigen on it, but now it's to immobilize the um, antigen in terms of the foreign invader. There are three main types of white blood cells involved. T cells, which is key point two, B cells, which is key point three, and then macrophages, which we talked about already. So T cells job, and we'll talk about it more, is to alert and regulate B cells. B cells job is to produce antibodies to immobilize the invader and then macrophages engulf the invaders through phagocytosis which you know about a little bit already. So T cells. Uh, T cells are produced in the bone marrow and are matured in the thymus gland and that's why they call them T cells. I don't know why they call B cells B cells but that's why they call these T cells. Uh, in reality, there are many different types of T cells that do very similar jobs. So we're going to just focus on the most common job that they do, uh, which is finding and marking antigens. So the beginning of the uh, third line of defense is the T cell response, and it happens soon after the inflammatory response. So the inflammatory response doesn't work, the antigen flows to many different parts of the body uh, or it is proliferating. Um, the T cells will then go and work to find and mark those antigens. Uh, they mark them with small proteins called cytokines. And these cytokines are what is able to be seen by B cells. So these B cells then help to mount a specific immune response. So the, the second line was to mount a generic response, an all-out assault on everything that had to do with that antigen. Uh, but if that doesn't work, you need to get specific. You need to take specific action. So T cells start to mark these uh, foreign invaders with cytokines. B cells, which are also produced in the bone marrow uh, and are activated in the spleen. So maybe they're called B cells because they're produced in the bone marrow. I don't know but they're activated in the spleen. Uh, when they are alerted to the presence of cytokines on the outside of antigens, um, they start to get activated because these were placed there by T cells. So T cells place the cytokines on the antigens, the B cells then start to uh, be alerted and start to take effect. So once the B cells find the antigens, um, they start to produce antibodies. So it would be way more convenient and way quicker if you already had antibodies or if T cells could produce antibodies. But unfortunately, your immune system is kind of slow. Uh, when you get to the third line, it takes some time to build up that response. Uh, it takes very little time to mount the uh, second line of defense, the inflammatory response. The third line of, of defense takes quite a bit of time. So once the B cells find the antigens, they start to produce antibodies that are specific to that antigen. And then these antibodies uh, can actually go to work and start to immobilize uh, the antigen. 
So these antibodies only work for these one type of invader, uh, like a specific virus, a specific bacteria, or anything, um, any particular foreign invader has its uh, own antibody. So antibodies uh, are produced by the B cells uh, and they mark invaders for destruction and immobilize them so they are easy to find. The cells that do the destruction are the macrophages, as we're a little bit familiar with. They do phagocytosis. Uh, and the difference this time is that the macrophages were sent there specifically by antibodies to do their job. Um, they were not done and they are not sent in an all-out assault. They are sent to a specific place to engulf a specific antigen and to destroy it. So just kind of to recap, once the antigen is um, in your body for a while, that's when B cells, sorry, that's when T cells start to detect it. They mark them with cytokines. B cells then detect those cytokines and produce antibodies. That's four steps. Antibodies uh, attached to the antigens, that's five. Uh, the, and then the macrophages are called to them, that's six, and the macrophages then destroy them, that's seven. So uh, your immune system has at least seven different steps before it can actually get to what it needs to do to help you and start to destroy those antigens. So the third line of defense it really is a backup plan. The first line of defense and the second line of defense uh, stop so many things, so many foreign invaders from getting into your body, um, but sometimes the third line of defense is required. Uh, so the antibodies, after the invaders have been removed from your body, uh, the antibodies still remain in your blood. Some remain for a long time, some remain for only a very short time, uh, some are gone almost immediately, some last forever. These antibodies are available to detect and immobilize the invader if they ever see it again. Uh, that's why sometimes you can have a little bit of a better immune response to a foreign invader that you've seen before. They may also recognize invaders that are very close to the ones they've already encountered. This is why some diseases can only be acquired once or can only be acquired once a year or every once in a while. Uh, antibodies last for a variable amount of time and are specific to particular foreign invaders. So a little uh, recap here, there's the first line of defense and the second line of defense, which are non-specific, they def defend against anything and attack anything. So skin, mucous membranes, hair, uh, secretions, everything like that to stop things from getting into your body. The second line of defense is the inflammatory response like fever, uh, and it is phagocytic leukocytes, the macrophages that uh, do phagocytosis. And then we have the specific defenses or the third line of defense uh, with lymphocytes, uh, so that is the types of B cells and T cells, antibodies, and memory cells to try to remember that foreign invader. Uh, one problem that can happen when you the when the third line of defense is activated is sometimes it gets a little over aggressive or overactive. So this third line of defense can sometimes get too aggressive with the invader. Uh, so let's say there's only a little bit of the invader that actually survived the second line. Uh, and then you produce your third line of defense and there's a whole lot more uh, army that you are going to use to attack it. Uh, it can start to cause the immune system to attack parts of the body that are not associated with the antigen. And this can cause a lot of damage to the body even after the invader has been taken care of. So sometimes this is the main cause of damage. Uh, you fought, you fought off the virus or the bacteria, but your immune system is, go, is out of control right now. So sometimes you can develop an autoimmune disease. Uh, sometimes it's required for you to suppress the immune system with steroids uh, to try to prevent this from happening. So it's extremely common. Uh, sometimes it can get a little out of control and sometimes not much happens. Uh, sometimes that might be why you get hives um, when you come into contact with pollen uh, your immune system is overreacting to something that is not a threat, and then it is starting to attack your own body. So that is a very common uh, symptom or reaction. Overreaction of an immune system is hives or itching, uh, runny nose, runny, um, 
watery eyes, things like that. Uh, what I'd like you guys to do is I kind of give you a choice here. Uh, in the past, I've had uh, everyone record and edit a video uh, of a uh, story that shows how an antigen sneaks past uh, the line of defense. Now, being that we need to stay apart for the most part, we can't do it in groups. So you would uh, need to be able to edit it and you'd have to play all the parts. So I think it could be pretty good if you get into it um, and um, like, you know, put on a different hat for each one. Uh, or maybe you and a partner can do like each a few of these parts and edit them uh, separately. But or you can write a story on your own, whatever you like. Um, but what, essentially what you need to do is include all the lines of defense and the cells. Uh, what I want you to think about is like you're an antigen and you're trying to get into the body so you need to get past the first line of defense maybe be stealthy to get past the second line of defense and fight to get past the third line so again if you want to do some recording uh, and edit the video together um, that would be great or if you want to write the story that would be awesome as well um, but if you have any questions about what I'm thinking here, please ask, send me an email. Uh, if I see you in class, that'd be awesome as well. But thanks so much for watching everyone and I will see you soon.